Uh, the GM meeting's winding down, and JP Morosi making the rounds, gathering all the information, and we want every single piece of it. Good morning to you. I was talking with John Heyman earlier about the potential the Phillies get Aaron Nola back, and we had Dave Dombrowski on the show. He said, we want him back, but now we keep hearing Sonny Gray. JP, is that in addition to, in lieu of? What do you know? Good morning. <laughs> Lauren, Lauren, good morning. Sonny Gray is at least a co-favorite strong option okay. for the Phillies along with bringing back Aaron Nola. When you think about Sonny Gray, a couple things stand out. Number one, the Phillies and a lot of other teams that need pitching aren't exactly sure how the pecking order will go in terms of uh, who signs first. We do believe that Yamamoto is going to be posted here in the coming days. That should provide some clarity. But the connection, Lauren, that we should think about here with Sonny Gray and the Phillies, Caleb Cotham, the very highly regarded Phillies pitching coach, was, yes, a teammate of this man at Vanderbilt wow. going back about a decade. You think about those connections, how far back it goes. That connection is real. Caleb Cotham was his pitching coach with the Reds. So you think about that comfort. That could be a major element that if the Phillies do not land Aaron Nola, that Sonny Gray could find his way to Philadelphia. Oh, wow, I did not make that connection, but it is a real one. A 2.79 ERA this past season, as good as it gets. The Twins loved him and Pablo Lopez at the top, and there's a lot of conversation about Jorge Polanco and Max Kepler. You spoke with Derek Falvey. What did he say about their future, JP? Lauren, it's a really interesting topic because the Twins, as we mentioned, they were division champions. They won a playoff round, thanks in large part to Sonny Gray, who is now a free agent, and potentially a couple players who could be available on the trade market. I asked Derek Falvey that exact question. Here's what he had to say about both Jorge Polanco and Max Kepler. Well, I think that any, you know, fortunately for us, we had a lot of good players that we felt really good about through the course of the season that played well for us through the year. So we fully expect that guys who are established major league players, especially with our young players coming up behind them, that they're going to be targets of other clubs. We value them too, you know, and ultimately they fit for us as well. So uh, those are part of the conversations we'll have every offseason. When you think about it, Lauren, especially with Jorge Polanco, because of the arrival of Edouard Julien, the health of Royce Lewis coming up, he is someone that is available. And people around the industry believe there's a, a very strong chance that the Twins will, in fact, move Jorge Polanco this winter. You think about the larger topic, there are not as many quality free agent bats as there are free agent arms. For that reason, more activity on the position player front with the trademark. And again, Max Kepler, a very affordable option for this year. It was an easy pickup for the Twins because of his production and how easy it could be to move him. Again, they also had some younger position players emerge and get to the major league level in the outfield. So when you look at it from a roster balancing standpoint, Lauren, and, and the concern the Twins have about potentially losing Sonny Gray, you could move or potentially package Kepler and or Polanco to bring back the innings that you're missing mm. should Gray sign elsewhere. Well, it's so hard to read between the lives. He's saying, you know, we value them too. You're saying they could be moved. The AL Central so difficult to predict. I mean, especially with the Guardians and Shane Bieber. What will that look like, JP? Well, Lauren, with Bieber, it's interesting because, of course, the, the Guardians were able to get him back healthy towards the end of the season. He was able to make two healthy starts for them at the very end to show his value. Now, we know the Guardians, the way they've almost always handled things, a lot of their pitchers, as they get closer and closer to free agency, they are moved. That is, the, that is the past behavior of the organization. That's how you would expect things to potentially go this time around. And let's listen to what Mike Chernoff said about the potential of Bieber being dealt this offseason. Look, Shane uh, came back and made two great starts at the end of the year, right? It was a lot, he had a great season up through around mid-July uh, when he had to take a break with, uh, with, with the elbow issue that he had. And we were concerned about how much time he'd get back towards the end of the year to make sure that he came back healthy. We sort of went really conservative with our ramp up with him. He had two great starts at the end of the year. He feels great going into the offseason. I know what you're asking me at the same time. We expect Shane to be in our rotation. I mean, we have a really strong rotation between Shane, Tristan, some of our young pitchers, which we feel like can be the strength of our team. So we're looking to build around that. Obviously, we have to be open-minded on any potential trade opportunities on any player, but we're expecting Shane to be a big part of our team next year. 
Really interesting point by Mike about Tristan McKenzie, who, of course, has shown flashes of all-star ability, missed some time, obviously, with injury as well. But if you could find a way to put Bieber, McKenzie together, Tanner Bybee, how much he has emerged, Williams as well, they have the makings of a really strong rotation in what is certainly a winnable division. We don't know, again, as we documented with the Twins, do they regress a little bit? The Tigers are getting better. The Guardians always seem to find a way to compete now with a new manager and Steven Vogt. So I would say this to, to close on Bieber. We probably won't see a trade of him imminently because there are so many quality arms out there in free agency but as we get closer to the end of December early to January once the free agent market fills out a little bit look at that resume Lauren he has been one of the best pitchers of the last five to six years the industry knows that and when healthy the way that he proved he was healthy at the end of the season there's going to be a strong amount of interest this winter in trading for Shane Bieber. Uh, you're the best trying to get information out of these executives that they don't want to give. Mike's like, I know what you're asking. I just, I just frankly don't want to tell you, but you are trying to get it, JP. And I <laughs> think that's pretty darn cool. I remember back at the trade deadline, you and I having this conversation about Eduardo Rodriguez. It was right at the deadline. He was as good as gone to Los Angeles. And then it was a no-go. So it's a valid question. Are all teams on the table for him now or are there restrictions? Lauren, excellent question, and I put that question to a source close to Eduardo Rodriguez in the last couple days and was told that there are no geographic restrictions. Now, there's a lot of different varying schools of thought as to exactly what happened at the deadline and why he did not accept that trade to the Dodgers. Contractually, there were some things to work through, and ultimately his demands were not met as to what financially would have had to happen for him to agree to that trade. Now it's a bit of a reset. He's in free agency and from a family personal standpoint, if, if he's able to sign a, a four year deal with a new place, maybe he has a bit more certainty and is comfortable going. We do know this. The Dodgers, the team that tried to trade for him in July, they still need pitching, probably multiple pitchers. Same is true for the Dodgers, rivals on the West Coast with the San Francisco Giants. There are a lot of teams out there, the Cardinals are another one, who have <laughs> tremendous needs for multiple starting pitchers. So for Eduardo Rodriguez, financially, as much as it stung the Tigers to not be able to make that trade, uh, financially now he's in the open market with a lot of teams around the country calling about Eduardo Rodriguez. And then pitching, I would imagine, becomes a priority for Detroit. J.P. Morosi, good stuff, live from the GM meetings. We appreciate it, as always.